than we want to. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to change some of these out. In this case, we don't need to be incredibly accurate here. So we've got our front mat and our back mat. Let's just have a little look through, make sure there's not a huge amount of, uh, of gaps in there. There is actually a little gap there. So let's just fix that one. There we go. So I think we're ready to, uh, to export. So let's take out our tracking data first. So we'll come to our uh, front track. We'll just have that selected. Even though we've got the eye turned off here, it's still it's still an active. If we come to um, export tracking data on this one, we still see we're still getting the uh, the information we need, and we can export either as uh, corner pin data. But in this case, we want definitely want transform data. I'm just going to copy it to the clipboard, flip into my After Effects project, and you can see this is just the uh, original shot. Let's just fit this up to 100%. That's uh, just the original shot there. And I'm going to create a, uh, a null object. So new null object, and we're going to call this front track. Make sure I'm at my first frame and just paste. And it's pasted in that tracking data for me there. Now if we have a look at all the keyframes it's made. It's made uh, keyframes for anchor point, position, scale, and rotation. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of the anchor point keyframes. I'm just going to reset it there. If we don't do that, then the anchor point and position keyframes are just going to cancel each other out. And for this job, we don't need the anchor point keyframes. Okay, so back into Mocker AE, come back to my backtrack, export that tracking data, copy that to the clipboard, back to After Effects, new null object called back track. Again, paste all that in, do the same thing. Get rid of the anchor point and just reset it. Still got all the tracking data right there for us. The different tracking data, lovely. Now here's something that's really, really cool. If I come to my front mat here with version two of, uh, of Mocha AE, I can export shape data. And we want to keep it as Mocha shape data, of course. And I'm just going to export this selected layer in this case. Copy that to the clipboard. Now what that's going to do is if I've got the Mocha Shape plugin in After Effects here, I'm going to be able to paste in that shape data directly to use with my masks. So I'll show you how it works just on the original layer. So now if we just paste that shape data in there, so you can see that we've got that as a, as a mask just following along in our, um, in our video. That's cool, but we're going to use this in a slightly different way. Just going to invert it um, so that we've got a nice little patch going on in there. Uh, we can also we can also take out the edge width data. So the edge width is the is of course the thing that's that's blowing it all up. We can just render it straight out with hard edges again. Instead of having this as a shape cut out, we can also use this as a uh, uh, as a color composite, so let's just take the invert off, so we can have it sort of just as a as any sort of color coming in here. Take a lovely green, oh, gorgeous, and change the uh, change the opacity of that color composite if we want to. And we can also have it as a color shape cutout, um, so just a cutout on the background. So now, if I come to my uh, clean plate here, remember my lovely little clean plate, lovely. Uh, let's bring this back into our composition here and just don't set that underneath so now you can see that's painted that right back in for us so we can see that's all, all nice and clean and i'm going to use parenting to parent my clean plate to my front track here and let's see how far that takes us and you know what that's looking pretty good i don't know if we don't have this man doing any uh any more kicking or anything like that Kind of cut off, cut off at the waist, which is uh, oh, perfect. If we didn't have that perspective problem to deal with, um, that would be a good way of handling it. 
you know, just, just poking a hole in the original and then having the clean plate just coming in underneath and tracking along. But we're going to have to do things slightly differently um, because we do have this perspective thing to, to worry about. So let's come back into, uh, actually, let's, let's clean this off a little bit. So let's take my, um, let's take my shape out of the way there and we'll just leave my clean plate there for the moment. Another thing we can do with the Mock AE shape data is use it to create a track mat, which is uh, what I'm going to do now. So I'm just going to create a new um, new solid, new black solid, and we'll call this uh, front track mat. Oh, it's just actually we'll just call this front mat. Here we go. Come to the beginning of the timeline, paste our shape in there. And instead of using this uh, shape cutout, we're going to use this uh, color composite. So we've got a, a so we've got a black and white mat pretty much there. So let's uh, collect all of these up a little bit. So let's just come down to our clean plate, turn it on, and go into the track mat and set that to Luma mat. And that's done the, uh, that's done the same sort of thing. Except this time we've got the paint layer going over the top of the other layer instead of poking in from underneath. So now we'll come in and we'll take the, um, the back layer out from Mocker AE, so just switch back and forth. Okay, so back into After Effects, create a new layer called Back Mat. Come to our first keyframe again, our first frame. Paste that data in there, come into our effects, call it a color composite. And we'll drag down another clean plate, set that track mat to Luma Mat, just as we did before. Come to our final keyframe, parent the clean plate to our backtrack now. This time, let's rearrange these layers slightly. Move our whole back group here, just underneath. And let's take a little look through. And you see now that's gotten rid of, uh, gotten rid of all of it. Come in here, turn on motion blur to our clue, two clean plates. Let's take that down to uh, set that down to auto, and let's RAM preview. Oh well, silly me. We've got the. Uh, we can still actually see Maisie Boy's head in one of the frames, but any difference to us at all? So let's come back into Mocker AE just to quickly fix this. Our back mat here. Find our first keyframe and just drag that up here just have a little look through oh, we still coming up let's quickly take us to the next keyframe really make sure this time cool now we can just quickly export the shape data again copy that to the clipboard back into after effects back to our back mat here and if we paste it in, it's just going to automatically replace what we had in there before. So no extra rendering, nothing like that, just as simple as copy paste in there. So what I might want to do just to soften it out just a little bit more, just feather the edge, just with a fast blur in After Effects, just to show you that it can be done. So again, let's fit back up to 100%, render it out. Now I want to spend a bit more time on it, getting it perfect, of course I could, I'd add a bit of noise in here, add a bit of dust going through in there, just to anything to, to stop it from being uh, from being a dead frame there. But for the sake of this tutorial, I think it's it's pretty decent result given the time. So we've taken it from here into there, using a couple of tracking layers that were able to track this quite complicated camera movement in this shot, and drawing a couple of other shapes, linking those to the tracks, and then compositing it all back in After Effects. So the final thing, as ever, just uh, add a quick adjustment layer, use one of the, um, one of my film wash effects, just to give it a quick grade in there. And just do a final render out. So I hope this has been useful for you and has given you an idea of how to use the various data you get from Mocker AE and then tie that all together back in After Effects without the need for any rendering between the applications. So it's just a simple case of copy pasting the data to get as smooth a workflow as possible. So I hope this has been useful for you. Thanks for joining me.